we stand at a corner of accelerating change unlike anything ever seen in the history of life. It feels as if destiny could tip either way between utopia and dystopia. The risks we face are demoralizing. But beneath the rampant pessimism for our future humanity can not only survive the coming centuries, but thrive deep into the future. No one figures out what comes next. But there are three broad directions in our future could take. The first is the devastation. A major disaster threatens the destruction of civilization and possibly even the end of the human race. Second is plateau, where mankind averts collapse but hits an upper limit of advancement. And third is superiority, where humanity achieves its full potential multiplies into the trillions or transforms along the way into something completely unthinkable. Anticipating these futures will explain the chances we face and the commitment we have as we step into an unexpected new era for planet Earth, for ourselves. There are over 5,000 exoplanets and the rise in numbers is not expected to slow down. As technology improves, it allows us to look even further into space. So far, all the stars found have at least one planet. Considering the number of stars in the galaxy, it follows that there are a lot of exoplanets still to be discovered. Exoplanets come in a wide variety of sizes, from gas giants larger than Jupiter to small rocky planets about as big around as Earth or Mars. They can be hot enough to boil metal or locked in deep freeze. They can orbit their stars so tightly that a year lasts only a few days. They can orbit two suns at once. A surprising factor has started to present itself as we learn more about worlds outside the solar system. The universe is weird, really weird. From worlds that rain iron and glass to diamond worlds and planets that have escaped the grip of their parent stars, our burgeoning exoplanet catalog demonstrates that our solar system is reassuringly boring. This planet lies just 22 light years from Earth and is at least 4.5 times as massive as Earth, according to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Gliese 667 cc completes one orbit around its host star in a mere 28 days. But that star is a red dwarf considerably cooler than the Sun, so the exoplanet is thought to lie in the habitable zone. However, this planet, which was discovered with the European Southern Observatory's 3.6-meter telescope in Chile, may orbit close enough in to be baked by flares from the Red Dwarf. This planet lies 600 light-years away, and it was the first Kepler planet found in the habitable zone of its parent star. But this is considerably larger than Earth about 2.4 times our planet's size. It's unclear if this super-Earth planet is rocky, liquid, or gaseous. Kepler 22b's orbit of 290 days is pretty similar to Earth's 365. The exoplanet orbits a G-class star like our Sun, but this star is smaller and colder than Earth. 
Kepler-22 may be too far away for even the James Webb Space Telescope yet to say anything about the atmosphere of its planet. If Kepler-22b does have an atmosphere that provides similar greenhouse heating to the one produced by the Earth's atmosphere, then its average surface temperature is around 22 Celsius. However, if the greenhouse heating is similar to that on Venus, then the temperature is considerably higher, around 460 Celsius. The temperature on the planet's surface may vary considerably, depending on how elliptical the planet's orbit is. This planet could be a super Venus or a super Earth, depending on how habitable its surface is. At the time of its discovery, however, researchers said the planet had many similarities to Earth and that it is orbiting a star much like our own sun. Hailed as the most Earth-like alien planet when it was discovered, Kepler-69c is an exoplanet about 2,700 light years from Earth. There has since been some debate about whether it is more like a Venus or an Earth. Hailed as the most Earth-like alien planet when it was discovered, Kepler-69c is about 2,700 light years from Earth. There has since been some debate about whether it is more like a Venus or an Earth. NASA, for example, noted that Kepler-69c's orbit of 242 days is close to what Venus has in our solar system. But at the time of its discovery, researchers were discussing the possibility of water, or even a global ocean, on its surface. One joked there could be clever dolphins there, because Kepler-69c appeared to be orbiting where liquid water was possible. Scientists have discovered three potentially habitable exoplanets orbiting one star. But there are loads of hurdles that we'll have to clear before we ever have the chance to visit them. The massive doses of radiation that would be absorbed by would-be astronauts. The potential damage caused by interstellar dust and gas to a craft moving at extremely high speeds. And the fact that traveling to even the nearest habitable exoplanet would take almost 12 years in a spacecraft traveling at the speed of light. The biggest problem, though, might be the enormous amount of energy such a craft would require. How do you fuel a spacecraft for a journey more than 750,000 times farther than the distance between the Earth and the Sun? Humanity can one day zoom to distant corners of the universe via wormholes, as astronauts do in the recent film, Interstellar. Wormholes are theoretical tunnels through the fabric of space-time that could potentially allow rapid travel between widely separated points, from one galaxy to another, as depicted in Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. The major barrier has to do with a wormhole's instability. If you don't have something threading through them to hold them open, the walls will basically collapse so fast that nothing can go through them. Holding wormholes open would require the insertion of something that anti-gravitates, namely, negative energy. Negative energy has been created in the lab via quantum effects. One region of space borrows energy from another region that didn't have any to begin with creating a deficit. Traversable wormholes, if they can exist at all, almost certainly cannot occur naturally. They must be created by an advanced civilization. In the grand tapestry of our cosmic existence, the idea that humans could one day transcend the boundaries of Earth and colonize the vast reaches of the universe is a mind-bending and exhilarating concept. Picture this, a future where our species isn't confined to a single pale blue dot, 
but instead spans across galaxies, planting the seeds of civilization on celestial bodies we once only gazed at from afar. The urgency of exploring space is heightened by the ticking clock of Earth's habitability. As our home faces its own challenges, the call to venture into the unknown becomes more than just a fanciful dream. It's a survival imperative. Imagine the audacity of constructing habitats on Mars, mining asteroids for resources, and perhaps even establishing outposts on distant exoplanets. This cosmic migration isn't just about escaping a troubled Earth. It's an ode to our indomitable spirit, an ode to the explorers and dreamers who refuse to be tethered by the gravitational pull of the status quo. The journey to becoming a multi-planetary species isn't just a tale of survival. It's an epic saga of human ingenuity, collaboration, and the insatiable hunger to discover what lies beyond. So, prepare yourself for a challenging ride into the cosmos, where the unknown becomes the next frontier, and humanity, with its insatiable curiosity, evolves from stargazers to cosmic pioneers. The adventure of a lifetime awaits us among the stars, and the story of our interstellar odyssey is bound to captivate the imaginations of generations yet to come.